Well, hello everyone. Merry Christmas. I'm actually doing this in October on a nice gorgeous rainy day. I've always wanted to give you a peek at what Dad did in the basement in Winchester every Christmas Eve. You remember when he would go downstairs to the workshop in the basement in Winchester and tell us all to stay upstairs. Well, I will make a confession. I did something naughty. I snuck downstairs after Dad went downstairs to take a peek through a knot hole in the wood of the wall of the workshop in the basement. And what you're about to see in this videotape is a vision of what I saw peeking through that knot hole while Dad is working on the Christmas present for us. And now you get to peek through the knot hole of all these years of myself working in my workshop for the gifts that I'm gonna make you. What I've got here with me after this journey in the rain, avoiding traffic and blowing kisses at all the drivers honking at me is a new toy called a plasma cutter. Plasma cutter is a tool or a toy, depending upon your state of mind, that can be used to cut metal with an electric plasma blade. Similar to a uh, uh, cutting torch, but it's cleaner and it doesn't use any gases and it's more accurate. It uh, cost me about $2,000. Essentially, I'll be spending $2,000 to make what I could have bought at, yes, Grant's, Tom's and Mom's favorite store for about $10, but that's the way I live my life. So let's proceed inside to my workshop as we get started to, on this journey of myself peeking through the knot hole in the basement in Winchester at our building. Anyway, this device is called a plasma cutter. This behaves the same way as a cutting torch, cutting through metal. Um, instead of using acetylene gas, it's the electric, so it's supposedly safer uh, than uh, using acetylene, and it's supposed to be cleaner. I intend to do, I intend to use this to enhance my artwork as I get further experience. I figure a good way to get baptized with this is to make a Christmas gift. You know, here is the plasma cutter units unpacked and set up. This is similar to a cutting torch, but it is the electro, it's electric, electric arc, a plasma arc. Um, it's got a built-in compressor. The this compressed air that is turned in, essentially into a plasma, which then burns through the metal. I'm going to briefly ignite this plasma so you can see what it looks like. And that will cut through the metal. And when I'm done here, I've clamped the plate down to a piece of copper, which is connected to the ground side of the plasma cutter. Then what I will do is try to freehand cut from here a human hand. So he's doing something like this by freehand. Now what's going to be very interesting is, is that I'm be running pretty blind because I have to wear a welding mask, a welding hood, to protect my eyes from the ultraviolet light from the plasma, which means I will not see the work very well. That's why I have this light shining right on the plasma very close that I can hopefully see what I'm doing when I have the hood on. Okay, I 
I've got the camera set up, so hopefully you can see what is going on. We move this side, and maybe you can see me cutting this. But this is going to be very tricky. I'll probably make a lot of mistakes, and you probably won't see any. Here we go. I made a slight little mistake with this one. You can see there's only, there's a, there's only um, a thumb and three fingers, whereas a human hand would have a thumb and four fingers. So it looks like the pinky finger is missing. So I could either throw this away and start all over again, but that will waste some metal. So I'm going to try something. I'm going to try to take a, another piece of metal, cut it to conform from here up to about here, then cut it out to create the pinky finger and back down something like this. So perhaps if we take this, that, uh, that's probably a little too small. Well, let's try a piece of this. We can take this piece, clamp this down to here, like this, and we'll take the cutter and cut the piece from here to about here. Then with the cutter, go in like this and around and down so we'll create a small pinky finger and an extension of the wrist something like that then attempt to weld it on so it um, appears clean so let's give that a try i'm going to go ahead and carefully clamp these together something like so It's a little kludgy, but we got, got it so this piece is held against this piece of metal. We take the plasma cutter, this, and I'll follow this metal up to about here. Then go away to create the small finger, and then back down again. We're going to create a very small piece here. What I've done is clamp the hand I've made so far onto a flat piece of stainless steel. Then I'm going to take the plasma cutter, 
cut along here that will conform with the existing hand into about here. Then I'm going to cut over like so, then up, and then back down, something like that, to create the missing finger and extension of the hand itself. So, I'm about, here we go. This is kind of a really setup I'm going to be doing for the welding. As you can see, here's a new piece of metal I just cut with the pinky finger. I made some mistakes here. I'm going to try to fill this hole here with filler rod to make it solid. Weld along here, and then weld along here to here, and probably fill this in to about here so it looks like a proper human hand instead of that sharp, um, uh, opening here. So I'm going to weld this, then um, I'll show you once I'm done welding. Okay folks, um, I've done the first attempt at welding. I created a weld, I filled it in here where the holes were, the weld, and I had to fill this in area here so it looks like a more natural uh, pinky finger. I'm going to turn it over and see what it looks like on the other side. That appears to be mostly okay on the other side. I'm going to um, go ahead and try to do the grinding now to clean that up. There, we finished the grinding. And this appears to look pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and consider this uh, modified successfully. It may not be perfect, but I strongly feel that this is a better job than could be done by the department stores of our youth, uh, Jordan Marsh, Zayers, Filene, and of course, Mom's uh, favorite in Wareham, uh, Penny. Okay, I've done, finished cleaning up the four spatulas. Here they are. I deburred all the edges, plus I burnished the surfaces. And knowing that in the Allen family, I would never be allowed to forget if anyone gets cut or hurt by any of my gifts. So I'm going to carefully rub my hands all over each of my uh, gifts, each of the spatulas, and make sure that I'm not going to get cut. And it looks like you see no blood on my hands. So we got four spatulas. So uh, Chris, Susan, Nan, or Tom. Chris, Susan, Nan, or Tom. Chris, Susan, Nan, or Tom. But Chris, Susan, Nan, or Tom. I don't know who. Well, let's that be at random. Although they look different in my realm of Christmas giving, they're all the same. None of, no two of anything I make are the same. Now, now we've got these clean. The next step would be to cut four of these squares, which would be a flank and cut off the handles off of four 
cutlery knives among the vast collection of knives that I have um, that I get from Goodwill and the Salvation Army and I use for my art and my bicycle accessories. So we'll take the, the flank and we will weld, I will weld it to the spatula. Well, I think I'm finally ready. We've got Four hands, which you and I shared the journey of making. They're now cleaned, uh, edges are cleaned, and sides are buffed, uh, burnished, but, um, so they look pretty nice. And you, and you should not get cut on them. So we got four shanks, and these were simple to make. I had I happened to have a little thin sheet of stainless steel left over for another project so I simply cut it up into four pieces using the plasma cutter and again I buffed them and cleaned them up and finally I have four cutlery knives that I bought for four cents a piece at the local um fair. So anyhow we're ready to go. I have to cut these and I want to take the handle of each one of these, cut it about here so we then weld it to the um, flank like uh, like this and weld the flank to the hand so my next step is to cut these and i'm going to cut one of them for you now then um we'll continue on go over here clamp it down You want, if, if you were to do this, one thing I need to suggest that before you do anything, you need to wait because that tip is extremely hot due to the friction. So I'm going to go off camera now. I'm going to finish. Well, now we have four handles. Looks like we're ready to proceed with the welding. So again, this is stainless steel, standard tape welding. Well, oops, uh, looks like we're out of the argon shielding gas. So I'm going to have to go out to the welding supply place and swap tanks and get some new gas. So I will be back maybe in, later today or later in the week. To Wonderful family. It is now election post-mortem morning and I have gone ahead and swapped out the special gas tank for my welding. So I'll be able to continue my project. By the way, the trailer you're seeing is my first major project after moving here to building. So I can carry my welding gas tanks to and from the welding supply uh, facility without having to rent a car. It would cost me 40 to $60 every time I rent a car to swap the gas cylinders. I've got good news, the t entire trailer, the materials for the trailer, cost me about $20. The first trip, which I made several, well, two months ago, already paid for that. This is now the third trip I made with a savings of probably, I'm guessing, assuming four, a minimum $40 per trip to rent a car. That's $120 minus the $20. A minimum saving so far is $100. And that's the good news. So. We'll see you inside the show. Here's the gas coming out of the torch. We got a fresh tank of uh, shielding gas for the welding. So now we're going to assemble and weld the four pieces. So we, we have the three components of each one. I'm going to weld one of them together on camera for you. Then I'll weld the others off camera 
Um, then we'll be back for the final, uh, finishing touches. So let's start with the handle and the shank. The handle and the shank will be flat. My plan is to have then to have the um, the spatula itself, the blade at an angle similar to something like this. So we easily use it to flip burgers or toss eggs, whatever you want to do with it. So let's first weld the handle to the shank like this. Okay, we get the handle welded the shank. Uh, you notice that the um, shank warped up a small amount right here because um, there is a because of warpage due to the heat and the metal. Um, if this was critical, I would have clamped everything down so it would not warp. But since this is a a only going to be a um, spatula used for cooking, it doesn't have to be exactly flat. Uh, and besides that, being an Allen, a Mark Allen Christmas gift, uh, perfection uh, would ruin it because I don't want to make it look like something you purchased at a store. So now we're ready to weld the hand to the shank. Now I'm going to weigh this down to ensure that the metal is flat against the base. Then we'll take the, sh the spatula itself. I hold it up to now, the spatula is resting against the shank, something like this. I'll tack weld it first in two places so this won't warp while I'm welding it, welding the seam. Okay, there you are. This is what they'll look like. Um, I will clean. Um, I will weld the other three off camera. Then we're going to move into the other shop where I will clean up the welds, clean up the buff, the metal overall, and make sure they're ready. Um, um, We are now at the final stop of our journey. Here are the four um, spatulas, almost ready to go. I'm going to quickly check each one and make sure there's no sharp edges or anything else that needs to be cleaned up. This is a small uh, grinding wheel that I'll use to buff up to the metal if I see anything. And today I'm going to put these in a bag in my bicycle and take them up to the North Pole and where Santa will send them on their way. So, so long, have a good holiday, and we'll be in touch. I love you. Well, here we are. There's the four of them ready to go. And now I'm off. Somehow we're going to get these up to the North Pole so we can get to you. You folks, so love you all. Merry Christmas.
Go on.